Good morning. As you can see, I thought I'd wear my uniform this morning, just so you'd recognize me. Check out the beard, I guess, yes. First of all, I just want to say thanks to my team who do all the phone calling every week to phone everybody in our core family to keep us connected one with the other, as God wants us to be connected with one another all the time. Just uh, to let you know, Majors Deb and Brian are on furlough this week. They were supposed to go to Hawaii for their wedding anniversary and to see their son. But as you can see, uh, there's a pandemic on and uh, their trip got canceled, so they're here relaxing in the area. Just some sad and happy notes at one time. Majors Deb and Brian are, um, as you know by now, they're going to be moved to Southmount over in Vancouver in the beginning of August. And uh, we're sad to see them go, but we know that God has better plans for them for them and moving forward for both of them. Coming to us all the way from Langford, which is a big move across town, our Major Les and Kathy Burroughs. And I had the pleasure of speaking with Major Les uh, on Monday, and he's pleased by coming here and joining us as our core pastors in August when, times come, when it comes a lot. Um, just a reminder about your tithes and offerings. If you uh, don't want to put them in the mail or you don't want uh, something in that sort, or do it by visa, you can phone me and I can have myself or one of my team pick up your tithes and offerings as we still have bills to pay in our core here uh, for our facility. You know, we have gas, water, electricity, and of course all the wages of those that are still working and that's only a couple of them. So I just wanted you to do this to remember that. Today, we're pleased while majors are on furlough for the next two Sundays in a row, we've got uh, Pastor George Hodgson and George does not really need any real introduction, as he normally doesn't like to be introduced too much. Uh, I've known George for over 35 years now, and we've become good friends, and uh, I've listened to him many, many times, and he brings God's message to us uh, very, very well. So anyway, just a, a final, just a scripture for today, just to keep you in, 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 in tech with, check with everything. Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified. For the Lord your God goes with you, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. And that's the message for this week for me. And I'll turn that over to Pastor George to bring you this week's uh, message. And uh, Godspeed with him, and Godspeed, and bless each one of you. And we'll see you next week. Well, thanks, Jim, for those kind words. Uh, I have been around here quite a bit, and... Actually, back in 1970, that's the first time I showed up at this church. And so I've got a long history with all the folks here. Now, I know you're all fighting over the sofas and the love seats, especially the lazy boy. So as you're getting yourself calmed down to listen to the message, I want to say uh, hi to my sister, uh, Marge Stafford, back in Fredericton Citadel, New Brunswick, and all of my friends back there. I know that you're tuning in because my sister said you had to. So uh, just welcome. I'm glad that you're here with us. And I hope that the message this morning is something that is meaningful to you. Now, we got this COVID-19 thing going all over the place. And some people are really affected by it, some not so bad. Like for me, I'm not sick. I'm out working every day. I'm in the sunshine. It's no different than usual, but I know a lot of people are isolated. A lot of people are feeling that uh, nobody cares for them. It's good that the army here uh, phones people every week to make sure that they're doing well. Our church, we do that as well. But uh, one of the members here, Tom Elwood, he is the, the retired Sergeant Major. He and I are on a rotation of pastors for a little church over in the Gulf Islands, over on Pender Island. And they asked me if I would write some kind of a little devotional that they could put on their church website <clears throat> every once in a while. And there's one that I wrote just uh, a few weeks ago when uh, COVID was just getting going. And uh, it's entitled Alone. And I was thinking of all the people who are alone, sitting in their apartment, sitting in the senior's home. And they, let's face it, they just feel so isolated that whoever sees them and is in a gown and a hat and gloves, 
Well, that's some of the thinking behind what I wrote. It was only last Tuesday, but it seemed a month ago now that I walked along the stream in the west field. The skies were in turmoil, the wind was bitter, cascading down from the snow-cloaked mountains. The bleakness of winter vainly resisted the promise of spring. And as I made my way along the gurgling water course, I happened to glance up the bank and there, in a tiny clearing, totally isolated by itself, buffeted by the wind and surrounded by the cast off of winter, was a beautiful daffodil. As I stood there to appreciate God's gift of nature, I realized that this one solitary daffodil was no less beautiful than the ones marching in waves across the fields. It mattered not if anyone appreciated its beauty or felt the blessing from its glow. It bloomed its finest for the one watching from above. In these days of the virus-induced isolation, when others happen to see us, as I saw that lonely daffodil, do they sense a sweet spirit? Do we give off a, a beautiful aroma of grace and peace and harmony? That's recorded in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, talking about the gift and the fullness of the Spirit. In the multitude of daffodils, I never noticed an individual bloom. Yet, it was the isolated one that captured my attention. Are you that isolated one? Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and He is my strength. He is my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. As you are sitting in isolation, are you dwelling in that secret place with God? For those of you who are in isolation, rather than looking what you don't have, what if we were to look at what you do have? An opportunity to be in the secret place with God. Now, there's a story of a man who was on a deserted island for 15 years. It wasn't Tom Hanks, son of soccer ball. This fellow was there and he sent smoke signals. He tried everything he could, but after a few years, he just gave up. He thought, this will be my home forever. Well, lo and behold, many years after he was cast on that shore, he saw a boat going by. And he started the smoke signal going up. And they saw it. And they sent a boat over to the island to pick this person up and see what was happening. The man was so happy he was dancing all over the beach. The people on the boat weren't sure if he was crazy or not. But they came ashore anyway, and the fellow was so happy, he said, let me show her around my island. He said, look over here, this is the house that I lived in. Over here, this is the shop where I did all of my crafts. Over here, this is the church that I go to. One of the rescuers said, what's that other building in the back? He said, oh, that's the church I used to go to. You know, it's amazing that people can be isolated and they don't like the company. Are you like that? Tell me, when you're alone, can you stand the company? This is a time of isolation, but it can be so revealing about ourselves. 
The other day, my wife Elaine got a, a Facebook message from a lady. She said, for years I've been saying I don't have time to get the things done I want to do. But she said, now I've got the time, I found out I just don't want to do it. Sometimes we would like to have more time to read our Bible, more time to pray, more time to send letters of encouragement to friends, but we just don't do it. Now that you have this gift of isolation from the virus, are you willing to do it? When's the last time you just sat in silence with no agenda, just sat and was quiet? Seismologists tell us that the, the earth has never been as quiet as it is right now. They said with the seismographs, they can see the smallest of tremors coming from the earth that they can never hear before. They say with the absence of the planes landing and the pounding on the runways, it's not being recorded now. The earth is falling silent. Marine scientists, they tell us the same thing, that the seas are getting so quiet. Speaking of seas and water, I'm going to have a drink. Don't run away to the bathroom while I'm doing this. Scientists say the ocean's getting quiet. They can hear the songs of whales from miles and miles away now. The freighters are stopping. The cruise ships are stopping. And into the depths of the ocean, silence is beginning to prevail. Have you noticed the reduction in distractions? Are you taking time to enjoy what you have right now? Remember the story back in 1 Kings 19, verses 11 and 12. Lord was talking to Elijah. The Lord said, go, stand out on the mountain before me. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Have you thought how great a miracle it's been for God to quiet the earth and the sea so that you would be able to hear his voice? Are you allowing God to quiet you to the point that you can hear his voice? A few years ago, I took a young man out kayaking. Beautiful day. He'd never been kayaking before. I said, we're going to be able to experience the wind in the trees and hear the eagle as it cries going over them and look at all the different things that are happening. His reaction was, can I put my earbuds in now? People are afraid of silence. They're afraid of what will happen. They're afraid that God will point out to them. I don't think it's so much silence we fear as what may happen if we begin to really Listen to what God's telling us. Why is it when the pastor calls for silent prayer that we fidget and move around after a minute or two wondering when this is going to end? 
What do you suppose the father whispered into Joseph's ear when he was thrown into the pit, when he was sold into slavery, when he was thrown into prison, when he went into the side room off the big meeting room where all his brothers were and wept before the Lord, what do you suppose God was whispering in his ear at that moment? What did the father whisper into Peter's ear? Remember, Peter was there in the courtyard and he was denying that he knew Christ and the word says Christ turned and looked out at Peter. Peter realized what he'd done and he went out and wept bitterly. During those tears, what do you suppose the father whispered into Peter's ear? And then you've got Judas. He wept bitterly. Did he listen to the father's voice? No, he went out and hung himself. What about John sitting on the Isle of Patmos? Getting visions of heaven and all the glories that were there. What things did the Father whisper into his ear? Do you remember Jesus when he was 40 days in the wilderness? When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane saying, Father, I don't want to be crucified. What do you suppose the Father whispered into Jesus' ear at that time? Are you willing to listen to the Father? Now that you've been given this gift of quietude, why is it we make ourselves so busy anyway? Are we afraid of what God would ask? Do we make ourselves busy serving rather than listening? In Matthew 5, verses 23 and 24, I changed a couple of words here. If you bring your gift of service to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift of service. Do we make ourselves too busy? Mark 11, 24, 25. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Why is it we're so prone to make ourselves too busy to sit and listen to the Father? Jesus is our example. And it says so often that the villages would come all over to be healed and to be touched and to be taught. But Jesus would get up early in the morning and go out just to let the Father whisper in his ear. It's so much easier to ask God to bless our activity than listen and be active according to God's will, isn't it? Given all this extra time, would we be willing to send letters of forgiveness to those who have offended us? Perhaps a phone call to someone who hurt us? Or is it time for us to seek forgiveness for what we have done? We have the time now. We have the silence. We have the quietude. 
It was in Germany in 1947. Corey Ten Boom, who had been imprisoned in Ravensbrück, was talking to the German people about forgiveness. Some of those in the crowd were actually ex-Nazis. At the end of the, the meeting, end of her speaking, a man at the back got up and made his way down towards the front to, to speak with Corey. When he got to where he said, I was a guard at that camp. I've since become a Christian. Can you ever forgive me? And what would you do? Corey struggled with that. She said it was only seconds, but it seemed like an eternity in silence as she waited to see what the Lord was going to get her to do. Here are her words. It could not have been many seconds that he stood there, hand held out. But to me, it seemed hours as I wrestled with the most difficult thing I had ever had to do. For I had to do it. I knew that. The message that God forgives us as a prior condition, that we forgive those who have injured us. And still, I stood there with the coldness clutching my heart. But you know, forgiveness is not an emotion. I knew that too. Forgiveness is an act of the will. And the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Jesus, help me, I prayed silently. I can lift my hand. I can do that much. You supply the feeling. And so woodenly, mechanically, I thrust my hand into the one stretched out to me. And as I did, an incredible thing began to take place. The current started in my shoulder, raced down my arm, sprang into our joined hands. And then this healing warmth seemed to flood my whole being, bringing tears to my eyes. I forgive you, brother, I cried with all my heart. For a long moment, we grasped each other's hands, the former guard and the former prisoner. I had never known God's love so intensely as I did then. You have been given an opportunity through this virus to sit and see what your life has been. Who has affected you and who you have affected? When you meditate on something, say the 23rd Psalm or even Psalm 51, David confessing his sins. As you meditate on that, I would like you to do something for me. If the Lord reveals something to you, and you actually take advantage of the time to phone or write someone who has hurt you, or if you know very well, you should phone or write and ask for forgiveness. Will you let me know? You can contact me at my email address, Pastor George at telus.net. It's very simple. Pastor George at telus.net. And let me know this week what has gone on in your life because of this gift of silence. And we'll talk about some of those next week, not by name,
but by topic. Let's just bow our heads. Father, sometimes you bring us gifts in the most wonderful ways that we can't understand. This virus, to most in the world, it's something that is destroying the world, and yet for we as Christians, it's a time for us to breathe a sigh of relief for the quietness and the opportunity to be in your presence. Father, for those who are listening this morning, might you bring a sense of quietude to them this coming week. Might you challenge their hearts. Might they be brave enough to send an email that next week we can hear the testimony of those who have been blessed by your word. So, Father, for all of your goodness and graciousness towards us, for your gift of quietude, we do give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.